you know, I could have sworn I had streamed a little bit of this before. And I could have sworn I had a Phoenix Wright icon around here somewhere. And I can't seem to find it. Well, son of a bitch. Alright, let's start a let's start a case. One involving the law. Oh, you know what? I'm already in the middle of a case. And now I don't remember where I was. Oh, this is gonna be hell on earth. Oh, that's right, you know what? I got stuck. And I stopped for a while. Good lord, have you ever tried to find out what makes the game go when you haven't played in like... certainly heard of Phoenix Wright. Yes, I figured out what game to do, and this is about the only thing that I can do right now. Probably not going to draw in a lot of uh, viewers, but that's probably for the best, because this is going to be arduous. I'm just going to show this guy everything. So this game is purely a brain teaser, I presume. Well, kind of. It's a visual novel where you have to collect clues and show the right things to the right people at the right time, or say the right thing at the right time. Um, and I was on a, a daisy chain of events and then I stopped playing for a while and now I don't remember where I was. So... Oh, I think I made it go. Haha! -ha! Can I do, uh... Full auto. Yeah. Ha 
Hell, I'm not even gonna remember any of the clues or anything. I'm gonna have to be a real detective to, to do this shit. Did you arc care of your old videos that were on Blip? No, sadly I did not. Okay, we got an ID card record. I don't remember what that's supposed to mean to me. Show it to other people with IDs. Okay. Uh, would that be... Gumshoe? God, look at all this damn evidence I have now. Which I can't fault him for. He didn't know Blip. Uh, would die back in 2015. Yes, that's true. I was actually given notice that it was going down, but I, I was just like... Alright. So this is what you were comparing Copy Talk to. Yes! Uh, will you ever do edited reviews like you used to in the past? Uh, no, Tyler. I believe those... I believe my work is done. Those days are behind me. I have no interest, I'm sorry to say. I came back to do just a few more in, uh, I think it was like 2017, 2018, and I did a few. I did like, you know, The Force Awakens and uh, Batman v Superman, which was fun. But then after doing two or three of them, I was sitting there at my desk one day and I said, wow, I really hate doing this. I don't want to do this at all. And uh, 2017, okay, yeah. So then I was like, you know what? The last time I had this feeling, I kept going when I shouldn't have, and maybe now I should call it quits. Plus, a whole bunch of other shit was happening on my life, but that was the major catalyst, so... Sadly, I've hung up the, the blonde wig forever. That second number... Oh, it's his... it's his number! Oh no, it's Edgeworth's number! I can't- I can't remember what he did. I think he's- I think Edgeworth is being suspected of murder or something? Maybe that was the last case. Oh no, this- this- this girl's sister is, uh... being suspected of murder. Oh, let's go talk to Edgeworth. If he's, if he's there. No, he's not. Let's go talk to this ditz. Nope. She's got nothing to say. They'll do canned responses if they don't... If, if you can't uh, get them to interact with anything. I don't think she's gonna say anything about anything. Alright, what about this idiot? No. Maybe there was more we were supposed to say to, uh... Good old Gumshoe. Or maybe now he knows something. No. So does this also constitute a visual novel? Yes, it does. It is a visual novel with uh, point-and-click adventure-style elements baked into it. And I've loved these games uh, since when I used forever. Since when I used to play them on the on the 3DS, which is what they were originally on. Maybe we need to show it to him again, and he has more to say about it. No. It's just the same thing. The second number on this list... belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. 
Why would Edgeworth have come to the evidence room? Uh, that's a good question, and that's all we got. Hey, Edward, thank you for the $5. Warner Brothers has so much faith in Matt Reeves' The Batman that they greenlit a spin-off for HBO Max. It will be awkward if the film is poorly received. I heard about that. I heard that they were doing some kind of a spin-off, and, um, yeah, it seems so sure, doesn't it? Isn't there a way... Sometimes that'll open up more dialogue options, but I don't see any. really much of anything we're gonna find here. Okay, so we just learned that Edgeworth was in there. there's anything new here. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about the case. No, we already did. Alright, who the hell else is there to talk to? It's wanting us to say more to, uh, more to Old Gumshoe, but it didn't look like anything was tickling his fancy. Let's see if we can go probe more. care about that. He doesn't care about that. Maybe there's something I'm supposed to do with, uh... Oh yeah, I had to put this back together and it was missing a couple of pieces. Hi, Leland. Oh yeah, Emma, that's who's who we got with us. There's 
saved you from Cats 2019? Ho! Oh. Nice save on my part. It never ends. Hiya, Chris. Happy Friday to you. Gabe and the family are just fine. says, I came across your brother's ancient review for Earth Final Conflict. It got me intrigued, and I'm very, I am happy to have a new sci-fi series to watch. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he made that ages ago. Okay. Maybe we are supposed to re-examine? Now that we know his... I didn't like Clone Wars much. Yeah, but it's like right at the beginning, and, and people already warned me that it doesn't really get good until a couple of seasons later. It is it is just shit right now, but apparently it does get better later, so I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'm about five episodes in. Okay, he wants to see evidence, so let's just show him everything. I feel like we already did that. Hello there, unknown soldier. Clone Wars has its moments, but overall, it's a pass for me. I, I'm not liking it so far, but I have been told... Um, I have it on good faith and good authority that it gets better after a while. Apparently someone did achieve your old anime- Oh, archive your old animated Clone Wars movie review. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Alright, these people don't care. You idiot. Okay, what do you think of that? Congrats on wrapping gold and thank you, Brendan. It was fantastic and it was also bittersweet because it's the last new to me persona stuff that I will have probably until either six or they localize scramble, whichever comes first. I feel like this wants me to show this to somebody, but I don't know who. Or... Or... Maybe I'm just supposed to examine it. Now this makes me think I'm supposed to show it to, uh... Show it to the moron in the detention center, but I think I showed it... Tried to show it to him, and he wasn't having any of it. What about Persona 3? Did you beat that? Yes, I did, CBS. Yes, I did. And I was surprised to learn, because a lot of people had told me that I might not like that one as much. Um, I think I liked it more than 4. That's a really hard thing to say, though, because all the Persona, all the Persona games have their own strengths and weaknesses. And they basically average out to being of the same quality. It really just depends on personal taste. But I liked 3 more than I was expecting to. It was a 
excellent game. One good episode in Season 1 I think you'll like is Rookies. Oh, thank you, Leland. I'll be on the lookout for it. Hello, Doc. So did you end up appreciating the bonus golden dungeon? Yes, I think the bonus golden dungeon is probably the only good... No, no I, don't... I want to be careful in how I say this. Um, it was the only fitting extra content that they put in the in the the re-releases um it, it it stayed with the theme of identity and the theme of friendship and all that whereas i thought the other the others just kind of missed the mark i really really liked it a lot it was, it was a worthy addition to what was already an excellent game uh was i streaming golden no uh because unfortunately i can only stream from the ps4 and it's uh it's not on the ps4 I'm watching The Mask of Zorro, without a doubt underrated, and the best superhero movie of the 90s. I know of a couple of people that really liked that film. I heard Persona 1 and 2 you don't care for, uh, which I understand why. <gasps> oh, let's talk to this idiot. What to do? Um, the Persona 1 and 2 are just a little bit too different. They don't have the social sim, which is like three-fourths of the reason I like Persona in the first place. So... Okay, it's got to be I need to do something with Gumshoe, because that was a cliffhanger where he was like, oh, Edgeworth was involved in this, but that usually opens up other options, and it didn't this time, so I'd be baffled. Hello, software. Uh, I know this is old news, and I was just curious on your thoughts. How do you feel about the Snyder Cut? Um, I think it's more of an interesting phenomenon. I, I'm more interested in the, the, the fact that a film that didn't get made is actually going to get made. Uh, that's interesting. I'm not interested at all in the film. It's going to be terrible. And, uh... Just have no interest. Saw Xenoblade didn't do it for you. No. And, sadly... I was really hoping that maybe Persona would be sort of a gateway to me getting into maybe other JRPGs, and I don't think it is. After trying, uh... Xenoblade Chronicles, I tried a little bit of Tales. Um, I think Persona's just an anomaly. It's so different from other... It has so many other uh, gameplay modes other than the typical JRPG thing. I just... I think that's... Persona's gonna be the exception to the rule. The Snyder Cut is Mass Effect 3 Extended Cut times 9,000. I wouldn't know too much about that. Yeah, I already know this stuff. Here, let's 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 go through this again. You show him this thing. It's of the people who came in here. Whoa! The second number. The second number on the list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. And, okay, so then the music changes. Why would Edgeworth have come into the evidence room? And this would usually open up, like, a new dialogue or, or something. And it just... doesn't. And I don't know how to make the game go. Uh, Fourth of July was fine. Just hung out. Nino Kuni is a good series choice for starting out in RPGs. Um, yeah, I checked that. I I did a little looking into that. I haven't played it or anything, but I don't think that. I just don't think JRPGs are for me. I think Persona um, created a formula that speaks to me in a way that is very unique. I'm still anticipating someone will make a second Ray Persona ripoff in the near future. Maybe it'll be worth playing. I think possibly that will happen, and I think we talked about this before. I'm surprised that it hasn't. If the Snyder Cut ends up being better than good, 
If not, oh well. Yeah, I, I just think it's more interesting that something like this is happening at all. I think this might encourage studios in the future to just uh, let filmmakers make their films, because if they don't, people are just going to pester them into doing it anyway. Unpopular opinion, but I wasn't too mad about the ending to Mass Effect 3. Maybe it's because I got into Mass Effect way too late. Don't know. Um, I've never played a Mass Effect game. Hi, a music lover. How are ya? Have you watched Doom Patrol? No, I have not, unfortunately. The DC films, they started to re- uh, they're the shows. The DC shows really started to, uh, to pile up on me, and I just, uh, it became too much. The DC film universe has been phenomenally mishandled. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam were good, though. I agree with all of that. Uh, the thing is, you will still have that conflicting tone since Snyder intended to make Justice League more lighthearted anyway. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't have high hopes for it. What do you think of the resolution with Mary? I, I really liked it a lot. I really liked it a lot. Yes, Ace Attorney, although there, a couple of things are working against me here. Um, I stopped in the middle of a case about a month or a month or two months ago, and now I'm jumping back in and I don't remember why I was, and I don't remember how to make the game go. And the second is that I keep thinking that I have stumbled upon something, and I haven't. And I don't know how to make the game go. The information we just got was oh Edgeworth was uh was in here. But that's all we got. I hated this case this phantom. I've never done this. This is like an extra thing that I never really did. Uh You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of turkeys. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> See, we used the wrong hashtag for Justice League. It should have been release the good cut. Yes, that would have been more apt because there was no Snyder cut. That's why he has to make the film now. Maya's not here. Yeah, I know. They replaced her with... Uh... Maya, you know, new Maya, and we want, we want Maya Classic. I really want to go to the second Ace Attorney game. That's my favorite game, because we have the little sister of the little sister character. And she is... Am I allowed to say adorbs? She is adorbs. Okay, do something. What do you, what do you think of this? What do you, what do you think of this, shithead? The little cousin of the little sister. Yes, I considered the... I, it's like the little sister... The little sister, little sister. This guy just doesn't give a shit. What I got out of the ending of Mass Effect 3 is the fact that one man who is... Uh, regarded as the most awesome person alive at the end of the day is just a normal guy. Maybe, possibly, but again, I, I wouldn't know. I would ask somebody to look this up for me, but I don't know where I am <laughs> in, the, in the sequence of events. I just don't know. I have a question for everyone here, asks Music Lover. lover. I am, cr am I crazy for liking Justice League? Mind you, I thought it was just good, not great or amazing. Uh... Oh. That message got retracted. So I suppose he changed his mind. Uh, I don't think anybody's crazy for liking anything. Uh, I hope J.J. Abrams doesn't touch Superman. He has tainted enough... 
of the things I love. Oh, has he tainted enough of the things I love? He already got his hands on Justice League Dark? Justice League Dark? He's... What? J.J. Abrams? What did I... What did I miss? What don't I know? Okay, here we go. Am I crazy for liking Justice League? Mind you, I thought it was just good, not great or amazing, not awful, but just good. No, I don't think you're crazy for having that opinion. That was your experience, and that's fine. Um, I didn't think Suicide Squad was all that bad. And that's something that, now that the, the Snyder thing is happening, everyone involved in that is coming out of the fucking woodwork to say that the studio completely fucked it up, and they went another go at it. I thought it was alright. Justice League Dark is the team up of DC Supernatural characters. Cause now I know what D Justice League Dark is, but when did JJ Abrams? What is JJ Abrams doing? He's not making a he's not making a Justice League Dark film or anything, is he? I retracted the message because I sent it at the same time as someone else's message, so I thought you wouldn't see my message. Oh, I see. No problem, music lover. Nobody has anything new to say. And nobody gives a fuck about any of the tasty treats that I'm bringing them. He's developing a Justice League Dark series for HBO Max? Oh my gosh. Man, this is like the first time Zatanna will ever be uh, portrayed live, and he could fuck that up. I really need to try this franchise. It's a good franchise. It's like if you strip away all the stuff about Persona, except for the visual novel stuff, it's kind of like that. You do have sort of a... It's almost kind of like an escape the room thing where you have to... Or, or a, you know, your typical uh, point-and-click adventure game where you have to use everything on everything to figure out what to do next, whereas you can see I'm tearing my hair out here trying to figure this shit out because I just don't remember. By the way, if you like these games, you might like... Uh... Dang... Danganro... Danganropa? Or Zero Escape. I'll put those on the list. Hello there, Cassie. Are you planning on watching YMS Guy Li Lion King live-action review when it comes out? His fave Disney movie is the original Lion King. No, I don't care for YMS. I don't really watch. So, unfortunately, uh, no. I will not be watching that. Dang and Ronpa, thank you. Okay, he's got nothing new to say. What do you think of that? He doesn't give a shit. What's my last breakthrough in this game? Maybe try investigating Edgeworth's office. I already did that. My last breakthrough was I showed this to Gumshoe, and he was like, wait a minute, the second one is Miles Edgeworth. And then that was it. No new dialogue options, no new branches, nothing. Any help would be greatly appreciated. What is the goal of this game? Uh, it works in two phases. You go around from place to place, talking to people, gathering clues, which basically involves just rubbing your face all over everything to see what happens. And then the second part is actually the court stuff, where you present evidence when such evidence is necessary, blah blah blah. And I apologize that this game is so damn boring right now because I am completely lost. Alright. I already investigated everything having to do with... Oh, let's, let's look at the sofa. There we go. That was helpful. Is stuff randomly generated in this game, or can you look up any guides? No, nothing is randomly generated. Everything is meant to be, uh... 
the different things you find unlock different things. It's just nothing is unlocking anything. Oh, wait a minute. No. I think that's just a flashback. Yeah, that didn't help us. And you can look up a guide, but I don't remember where I am. So I don't know what point to look up. <sighs> this game is like a book, except it's a game. Yeah, yeah, kinda. It's an interactive novel. Or a visual novel, as they call it. I'm so sick of your face. I'm so sick of looking at your face. She doesn't give a fuck about any- Nobody gives a fuck about anything that I have right now. And nobody has any new dialogue. Feels like, uh, some of the Telltale games, or Life is Strange. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, those are also kind of reinvigorated the point-and-click adventure before they collapsed off the face of the Earth. Yeah, like you're looking at her face. Too true. I'm looking at the fucking hat. What the fuck is it? What is on her fucking head? Hey Dan, do you think you would win... Oh, who do you think would win in a battle? Gandalf or Dumbledore? I have no possible way of answering that question. The Federal Business Bureau... Uh, stepping in with false advertising accusations is probably what caused Bioware and EA to make an extended cut for Mass Effect 3's ending. I don't know about that. I don't know if there was any false advertising on their part. It's a rice ball on her head. <laughs> so what do you need to do now exactly? That's what I want to know! That's what we're trying to find out. This guy doesn't want to say shit to me. He doesn't give a fuck about anything I've got here. He's like, hey, we, have, we need to give him some evidence, but I thought that's what this was, and he doesn't give a shit. Who do you think was a better protagonist, Frodo Baggins or Harry Potter? Um... Better in what sense? I seem to remember the 7777 is a password for something. Uh... Stop ignoring me, you cowboy fuckhole! Oh, this also reminds me of that other game... Contradiction. Never heard of that one. Oh. Oh. I I knew there was a way that you could show them people. Here. Oh, you can't show them. I wanted to show them freaking Edgeworth to see what he had to say about that. No, son of a... son of a bitch! Have you tried presenting the 777 sheet to... Yes, I have! You can't present profiles in the first one, that's what I thought. Only evidence. That's... you can show them people later. What the hell did he bring up Edgeworth for, then? Okay, take a look at this. Blah, blah, blah. Whoa, wait a minute, big revelation! This second number... is Mr. Edgeworth's. Whoa! Why would Edgeworth have come to the evidence room? And then, that's it! What? What is that? What am I supposed to do with that information? In the sense of how pro provocative... how oh, proactive they are. Their determination to achieve in their goals, how they grew over the course of their respective series, and how much they drive their respective plots. That's a difficult... that's very difficult for me to, um... 
we're, we're talking about two different characters who had two different things they had to do. One over the course of three novels, even though Tolkien didn't want it to be three novels. One to the co one uh, over the course of three novels, and one over the course of seven. Also, J.R.R. Tolkien had Tolkien had his entire story in mind when he wrote it. Whereas I firmly believe that there was an outline that J.K. Rowling was work, working with, but in general, there was room for her to adapt, and she came up with a lot of this stuff on the fly. There were a lot of retcons, so I don't know. I can't compute that in my mind in a way to compare those two things, I'm sorry to say. SF Debris talked about it, and I played it. It was quite interesting. You had to talk pe to people and show them items. Oh, this game? I really like this game when I know what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Have you tried using the fingerprint kit? I was just about to try that. I have, but not since... Uh, not, not since I got the whatever Edgeworth revelation. What if there are other bloodstains left in the room? We should... I've already done this. I think you have to see if the fingerprints match. If you like this game, maybe you like Doki Doki Literature Club. Haha, -ha, no! You thought you were going to spring a trap on me, but I am too savvy. Alright. found that shit. Doesn't look like we're finding anything else. Sorry I haven't played this game in a long ass time. I know, this is what comes of not playing for a while, coming back and then trying to... trying to retrace your steps in a game where retracing your steps is already difficult. should have been in Man of Steel just to spell Superman it's a trap. That's funny. There's no reason for the murderer to touch this spot if you let out the door. Look, guys! I'm making the game go! Where'd you get your hands on that? I'd like to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. Oh, gumshoe! I want us all to say that whenever Gumshoe says something dopey and endearing. Dopey and endearing are Gumshoe's only character traits. But that's okay, because it's a visual novel that works well with cliche, cliches and tropes. Going to give them my report for the day. The hell kind of report is that? What the hell is that? help, you know? Report? You mean the note written on the back of that f The one that says nothing but no problems? <laughs> oh, gumshoe. Hey, it's Mr. Edgeworth we're talking about. I'm sure he can use a report like this. I feel bad for gumshoe. He means well, he just blows at his job. Yeah, he usually 
kind of stumbles into the right thing. I feel bad for Snyder. Maybe if his DCEU films were advertised as Elseworld stories, then they might be liked more. I don't think they would, but at least you could justify the niche uh, of of the people that like his his DCEU films. Uh, That would be more appropriate. Trying to get him to make a universally appealing uh, series of films like like the the MCU was just a mistake. He was just wrong for that job. I don't even hate Zack Snyder. I just think he was absolutely the wrong person for that job. You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. Oh my god, my legs. <laughs> Have you ever played or heard of Thimbleweed Park? No, I have not. Who needs enemies when you got friends like Detective Gumshoe? Yeah. All right, bye. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say. We unlocked Edgeworth. I think we can go now. I should say this is mo- mostly my fault and not the game's fault. Whoops. Although I also guess... Um, as I say, I never played this... Uh, this little extra thing here when I played the original Ace Attorney games for the 3DS. I think that spraying mechanic was probably easier on the 3DS, because I swear I sprayed the shit out of that room. Uh, we want to go to... Look at your reason for why you feel Harry was the stronger protagonist. Oh, okay, music lover, I'm sorry, let me scroll up here. Uh, let me also go somewhere where this blaring music isn't drowning out my thoughts. Here we go. Okay. Harry was the kind of person who could face dangerous situations and threats head-on. He could hold his own. Frodo was a wimp. There's more. Uh, Harry grew as a person over time. He made more decisions. He took more charge of things. He went out of his way to save people he cares about and... Oh, to save people he cares about. And he was more determined to achieve his goal. Okay, then. Um, I think those things could apply equally to Frodo. But again, Harry was also in a cushy, comfortable school with no ring gnawing away at his personality, whereas Frodo was in a horrible, hot, disgusting, vile world, mostly all alone, and had to rely on very, very little guidance. So, again, very tough to compare. Uh, You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Sesame Street, and I show you how deep the sewer tunnel goes. (laughs) All right, then, Edward. Atlas says Persona 5 Royal, Persona 5 Scramble, and 13 Sentinel exceeded sales expectations. Now, that 13 Sentinels thing is something I am very, very interested to get my hands on. That is right, right up my alley. That is right up my Sesame Street. But good for Atlas. You know, and again, that's because I think Persona Persona 5 is really open people up to their properties. And um, I think they could be doing more to capitalize, but I'm glad that they are ahead of the game. Atlas is a good studio. They are the only studio who would ever have made and released a game like Catherine. They are the only studio who who would have made and released a game like Catherine. Fucking Activision wouldn't have touched that shit. Don't think there's really any room to compare the two. Harry's character growth was driven by plot. Frodo's was driven by theme. There's some truth to that. I think the issue is very nuanced, and I it's 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 very tough to compare. I don't make those kind of comparisons. I just I just can't. Oh, my apologies. Have we met somewhere? I'm gonna give this guy a really really bad. British accent. Atlas uses extra cocaine. It's very effective for sales. Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your pardon. So long. Oh, we didn't have to put up with that for long. Even when Atlas misses, they hit. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, you can give them shit for 
doing, you know, trying to address issues really badly in their games, but they try, and, you know, based on the culture, based on, you know, at least they try. I fucking hate Catherine. I think Catherine is fucking shit, but I'm so glad it exists, and I'm so glad they released it, and I'm so glad we have a studio like atlas that gave me a chance to know that i think catherine is shit because Kath, there's no other game like it there there's no other lunatic would make a game like that bless him catherine was growing on me there are it's it's i it catherine is like my youth i said this on facebook I have a, I cannot deny that I have a certain fondness for it, even though I hated most of it. Um, I don't know. I don't like the block puzzles, and I've tried to get into them. Um, I put it on easy, and you can breeze through, and I'm, I'm like, hey, when you breeze through these and you get a little bit of a groove going, this is kind of fun. Maybe, maybe uh, I'm easing into them, and then I put it back to normal, and I'm like, nope, nope, don't like them. Uh, and the problem with Catherine, I'm sorry, you're going to have to... Sp- you're going to have to watch is as is Edgeworth here for a while while I talk incessantly about Catherine. My issue with Catherine is this. It's got the same dual gameplay as Persona where you do the dungeon crawling in one half and the life sim in the other half with some extra stuff in between. The problem with Catherine is there's fuck all to do except the block puzzles. Even when you are talking to people it gets tedious and it gets dull for me because I don't really like many of the characters in Catherine. I don't find them very interesting, with one or two exceptions. Um, and talking to the people doesn't really give you the kind of advantage that getting to know the much better characters in Persona does. You know, it doesn't give you any advantages in the block puzzles, it doesn't give you any advantages at all, really, except for just unlocking more story stuff, which is fine. But at the end of the day, the only thing Catherine has to offer gameplay-wise is the block puzzles. And if you don't like the block puzzles, and I don't, you're fucked. Whereas within something like Persona, where I'm not crazy, I've 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 actually liked it a little bit more. But at the beginning, I'm I'm wasn't really crazy about the combat. But I like all the other stuff, and I like I do like the feeling of oh I I gave this person a nice stuffed animal in the real world and now I've got one extra move in the in the combat that's that's really cool even if you don't like the combat you feel like you feel like you've you've done something nice that gives you a little bit of an edge not so in Catherine you're either good at those block puzzles or you're not you either like them or you don't and the most you can do is drink a little extra every night and you'll move faster and it's just not enough for me there's not there's not enough to do in Catherine but there are people who feel differently than I do about that. There are people who adore that game. There are things about that game I adore, but there are people who really, really love that game, and I'm so glad that they made it so that I have the opportunity to say that I don't like a game like that, because make more fucking original games. Not everything has to be the same thing, and there's just it, it, everything's a live service now. Everything's a subscription now, and it takes a studio like Atlas to make a game like Catherine. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry, I really rambled on there. The question is, is Edgeworth here? I think he is. There he is! Right. I'm sorry, Mikey, I missed your comment here. No amount of Japanese culture can explain half of Japanese media, Catherine included. You know, it's going to be weird when the cover art is a giantist-style image. Yes, they were very on the nose with that cover art and uh, the kind of themes that are explored in Catherine, which, for someone like me, who is particularly asexual, though I can, by the way, I should probably clarify, I can understand on an aesthetic level what makes people attractive, and, um, but I'm not really, ooh, there's a, the, 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 the letter C, Catherine, who boy, I want to get me some of the, no, I, I understand it, but I don't get it, so that was, I guess maybe that was another, uh, you know, block puzzle in the way of my liking Catherine. I forgot what we were talking about. Hi, Matt. Thoughts on the rumor that Microsoft is buying WB Games uh, so they can have exclusive for Xbox. They will also have a future Arkham game. Kind of sad for PlayStation users. 
Uh, I have not heard this rumor. I, I don't really pay attention to rumors. I only react to things when they're confirmed. So, you ain't getting any information about rumors here other than interesting if true. I like the puzzle. I don't like the story. So that's another thing. <laughs> I guess you really have to you really have to be a certain kind of player to like a game like Catherine. But again, I think that's good. Uh, the past is like another country, and the '90s couldn't let go of the '80s until Blade and the Matrix. <laughs> I guess I think there's some truth to that. I thought you liked uh, Christina Rich Rich Rich. Holy shit! The spelling there. It's R I C C I. No harm, no foul. I do. I adored Christina Ricci. But um, here's an interesting tidbit of information about that. This was true even before I knew what the hell asexual was. You can ask my brother. You can ask the f friends closest to me at the time. My interest in Christina Ricci for all the pinups and magazines and shit that I had uh, revolving around that girl, it had nothing to do with her physically. I was enamored of the girl's vibrant personality and intellect. And that's the truth. Don't be sad for them. It'll be on PC regardless. Yes. Can anyone beat Flappy Bird? Holy shit, I don't know. I, I came in... By the time I knew about Flappy Bird, that guy had uh, taken it off the market. Alright, let's play some... Let's play some, huh? Confuse Matthew Mr. Christina Ricci as you gazed on... Fuck yes! Thank you, Brendan! Oh my god! Fucking right on, man. I want to screen cap that. And send, and send it to my brother. No, he doesn't know what I'm talking about. He doesn't know who uh, Yusuke and Anon are. That's a shame. Fucking hell, I love that. I love that. At the least, is the map in Catherine... Oh, at the very least, is the map in Catherine more readable than in Persona? Or is there no map uh, due to limited gameplay? Is there a map in Catherine? If there is, I don't know, Matt, Catherine, there aren't really levels in Catherine. There's really just one little area that you can be in at any time. Dan, since someone mentioned Christina Ricci, have you seen the Casper movie from 1990? <laughs> I was, uh... Um, there are still friends and family members that want to straight up murder me for the sheer volume of time I subjected them to that movie. I could probably recite the script for you now, and I haven't seen it in years. Um, I saw it, I actually saw it on Netflix the other day, and I was like, oh, you know what, maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw this on for old time's sake. A friend of mine actually, um had said, hey, I was I was watching Casper with my kids, and it made me think of you, and it made me miss you, so just want to let you know it's on Netflix. And I thought, maybe I'll watch it for old time's sake, but you know what? I, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed at what I put my family and friends through. I just, I can't watch it. Who are you going to call? Someone else. Yes, that was quite the cameo. Okay. What do you think of that, fuckhead? A record of ID card usage? As someone who still buys Blu-rays, Jaws in 4K uh, Ultra HD is something to behold. A film that old looking is good... Oh, uh, that a film that old looking this good is otherworldly. That's really interesting. I still have never seen Jaws. It's a real shame. Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Look at Edgeworth, he's so... It's this, it's this cross between sad and... and crowd. Like, how can I get out of this? I'm so sad. How can I get out of this? Ray's cameo in Casper was better than Ghostbusters 2016. I have to agree with you, my friend. Uh-oh, we got the sinister music. Why, Edgeworth? Oh, he was asked to go in by the guy with the gloves. The chief of police. He wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. What? I kind of 
like the Casper movie from 1995 still. I saw it again at some family event a few years ago. Watched a lot as a kid. Uh, as did I, though I'm pretty sure my kid... I was 15 when I used to... I was between 15 and, like, I think 17 when I used to watch that all the time. So, a different kind of kid. But I watched it a lot as well. This feels like a video game version of Clue. It kinda is! Unrelated evidence. Screwdriver added to the courtroom. Or added to the court record. Sorry. Stubborn as always. I told you this had nothing to do with the current case. Have you ever seen the clips on YouTube of the live Persona concert? Yes, I have. I've actually watched them frequently. Am I... I, I honestly thought that I might have been kind of racist? Because I assumed that the vocalist who did the Persona 5 soundtrack, you know, Last Surprise and Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There, I assumed it was a black woman, and it's not. But I looked through the, co the some of the comments, and uh, apparently everyone assumed it was a black woman, so I feel a little better about it. Wasn't Spielberg an executive producer of Casper movie? I'm pretty sure he was. Yes, he was. That was back when Spielberg was the producer of fucking everything. He was fucking time tunes. If you hate a blocks in Catherine, you're gonna get a headache from the block puzzles in the Battle for Bikini Bottom and SpongeBob movie games. People who played them testify. That may be true, although I'm willing to bet that that wasn't the only part of those games. He doesn't care about that. I think maybe we gotta talk to him. Let's chat it up with this chump. He also produced a live-action Flintstones movie. They credited him as Steven Spielrock. I remember something about... Man, we watched the... We went to see the Flintstones movie in the damn theater. I thought it was fucking fuck. I thought it was a terrible movie. I came out of that film with a, a full review for my, for my mum and me dod. I wonder if Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There lyrically works better for Persona 4, since the initial lyrics are, Who Am I? I thought about that too, yeah, yeah. Though I prefer it in P5, just because the music is more uh, appropriate. Hey, explain this! No, he doesn't care about that. What do you want from me, Edgeworth? The Flintstones movie was bad, but Halle Berry was sexy in that cavewoman attire. Just wow. I wouldn't know. I, did, I didn't even remember Halle Berry being in that film. What are your thoughts on Spongebob? Anyways, I keep mentioning it, and I don't even know if uh, you care about it. Um, I like Spongebob. I think it's a... You know, for the, sh the seasons that were good, I think it was a very funny, very entertaining show that I haven't seen any eons. Even if you didn't like that movie, you have to admit it was good casting. John Goodman as Fred, Rick Moranis as Barney, Elizabeth Perkins as Wilma, Rosie O'Donnell as Betty. I'll give you two out of the four. John Goodman and uh, Elizabeth Perkins were very well cast. The other two? Fucking hell. Rosie O'Donnell as Betty? Rick Moranis as Barney? I would've liked, I would've liked Dave Coulier as Barney rather than freaking Rick Moranis. Whew. Halle Berry's name in Flintstones is Sharon Stone. That's hilarious. 
The puns are better than the film. The Flintstones movie made me kind of sad as a kid, but I still like it because I liked the Flintstones a lot as a kindergartner. The average SpongeBob fan turned into Squidward when they got uh, when they get a month into their first job in high school, like me. Yes, good old Squidward. He was my favorite character in the show. Now this guy doesn't give a shit. What about this? You got anything to say about this? No. I think maybe I'm going back and forth. Are we disrespecting Rick Moranis? Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Rick Moranis, you'll never find a bigger Rick Moranis fan than me. But I think he was very miscast as Barney. Okay, what do you have to say about this again? Let me Let me focus up here. Oh, that's right. Chief of Police. He wanted me to do this. So now... Okay. Say more about this. No. Maybe we gotta go talk to the Chief of Police. Or maybe I shouldn't breeze through the dialogue, because I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure... It just told me what I'm supposed to do. So let's cycle through one more time, because I'm an idiot. Is that chick slapping you every time you show him the wrong thing? Possibly. It happens a lot in this game. Now I'm curious about this other case. I'd better make a note of it. Oh, it's okay. I think we got all the mileage we're going to get out of Edgeworth. Let's see if we can talk to... The Chief. Have you seen Star Trek The Next Generation digitally remastered on Netflix? Um... Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Well, then I'm sure you thought the casting of Barney... in the prequel Viva Rock Vegas was genius... and that when Stephen Baldwin played Barney... That's a little... I can see that a little bit more. I didn't mean to step all over your opinion, by the way. I just... This, this is just my... This is just me. It's just my opinion. My opinion doesn't mean shit compared to anybody else's. Okay, maybe he's at the Criminal Affairs Department. No. No chief. I'm not gonna talk to this idiot anymore. Uh, what's her name fucked off? The slapping and striking are supposed to represent sword blows like a samurai duel because this game is a battle of words and wits. That's where Edgeworth names co Edgeworth's name comes from. Yes, there's a surprising amount of depth when it comes to the backstory of all of these people. I'm actually not sure that it really holds up as they go on because they keep adding and adding and adding. But uh, maybe it does. I don't know. I love that there's an extended cut of The Hateful Eight on Netflix, split into four episodes. Only Quentin Tarantino would do that, and I love him for it. I have a... I have a love-hate feeling for Quentin Tarantino, which usually boards, borders on hate. I also saw the funniest thing I've seen in my fucking life uh, recently, where Samuel L. Jackson was talking about the roles that he gets from Quentin Tarantino. And, you know, Quentin Tarantino uses the N-word a lot, and he usually uses racial, racial slurs and racial, you know, uh, portrayals for nothing but entertainment. And that pisses a lot of people off, and a lot of people have accused him of being racist, and I think he kind of is. And uh, Samuel L. Jackson said in an interview, yeah, a lot of people ask, how can I work with uh, somebody who puts, uh, who is apparently racist. And he's, and Samuel L. Jackson said, Samuel L. Jackson said, the roles that, the roles that Quentin Tarantino gives me are always really good roles. My character is usually always on top of things, and he's always SMRT. And he's, like, in control of things. And a racist wouldn't give me those roles. So he literally can't be racist, because I get roles from him that are good. <laughs> and he's free to think that. 
I don't think that's how it works. Is it me or did Moulin Rouge treat love like it was a new invention by the Bohemians and Christian? Everyone else treats love like the raving of someone who's on drugs. Yes, that's kind of part of the formula, though. Everything was supposed to be new to these people. That's why he used very, very old tropes like the hills are alive with the sound. Well, not, not tropes. Old classic classics that are old to us but new to them, like the hills are alive. Gotta get back to CGI Nightmare, the musical. All right, hang in there, my friend. Okay, once again, I don't know what the game wants from me. Aha! Did you like the casting of uh, Raja? Uh, um, 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 um. Oh, somebody's you're asking about the Scooby-Doo films. I have not... I haven't seen those in so long. I saw, like, one of them. I, I couldn't... I couldn't tell you. That wacky old coot! In Japan, Edgeworth is called... Mitsurugi. 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 I don't know what to emph emphasize. Uh, which is ref a reference to a samurai sword, and is meant to mean that he is sharp. Like a blade. That's cool. I guess Edgeworth uh, fits that. It's a good good uh, analog, I suppose. Also, don't worry, I'm not stomping all over your opinion on Rick and bar. Hey, no problem, my friend. Everyone agrees the best casting choice was J.K. Simmons, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. It was a remarkable casting choice. What I want to know is why a deputy chief of police is on the investigation. Yeah, I want to know too. I want to go talk to Clappy right now. Do you hate the Michael Keaton Jack Frost movie like other critics do? I have never seen it. Never seen it. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial, including style my hair this way. However, I do have a code and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? People forget about the context. For example, of course a slave owner in the South during the Wild West would use the N-word. Of course they would have pseudoscience for why people of color are inferior. I have no issue with that. My issue is... My issue with, with him is not that he's being racist in the sense that he hates black people and is portraying them in a way that makes them seem however racist people see black people. My issue is, he goes into a film like... And by the way, I, lo I like Django Unchained. It's, when it, it's, it's the only film besides Pulp Fiction that I did like of his. Um, he goes into a project like Django Unchained saying, Oh, goody, goody, goody! I get to say the N-word all the time! N-word, N-word, N-word! And I have free reign because of the setting and because of the... You know, the time period, everybody said that, so I just get to toss it out there like so much candy. It's just a, it has a very cavalier attitude towards something that I think should be taken a little more seriously and a little less frivolously. However, I don't get to determine that because I'm not the artist, and I also think the artist has the right to do, say, portray anything they want. I'm just saying, I don't really like that being tossed around so casually for the purposes of entertainment. And I don't really like Quentin Tarantino because he's... I, I like people who are young at heart. I have never cared for people who are adolescent at heart. That's all. If you were still studying forensic science... Yeah, we were using this spray bottle to keep the cats away. Testing fluid, hmm? He might have used for this. Oh, we got an upgrade!
His films aren't usually smart. He's just a kid wanting to play with toys. Sometimes the style works, and sometimes it becomes Michael Bay films. I agree. I agree. He and he's he has the right to be a kid playing with toys. That's perfectly fine. When the stars align, I absolutely agree with that. I think that when it works, it works. You know, whatever. I I just you know, Quentin Tarantino is not obligated to grow up for my sake or anything. I just this is a personal taste thing, and I just. I don't like it very much. I think he's kind of an idiot. What about people that are purposefully immature at heart? Like <laughs> like me? Well, I am immature at heart. To which I've always said, okay, and? How is that a justification for it? Um, are, are you talking about the racism thing? Oh... <laughs> Because I think you can you cannot be a complete fuck Nazi monster and still be racist. I don't I don't think that I don't think that um, that Michael Richards was racist when he went on his tirade at the Laugh In, but I think he was certainly being racist that day, and that's still kind of not cool, man. That's still kind of not cool. If your if your go to thing is that, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, read up. It might it might have censored something. The first thing I read is Tarantino's last movie is pretty low on uh, overt racism. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think the last film I actually saw of his was uh, was um. Django. Django was really good. Django was really good. I think he means what I said about context. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. If you're doing glory, sure. Um, that's 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 a little more okay with me because you're actually seriously tackling an issue. If you're doing Django. And you're just saying goody goody gumdrops, I get to say the n-word a lot. Fine. But I'm still gonna take issues with issue with it. Michael Richards was definitely racist when he was screaming the n-word to black people, yes. I don't see how that could not be the case. Yes, absolutely. I don't think Michael racist Michael racist. <laughs> oh, wasn't that Freudian? I don't think Michael Richards is actually a racist person in his everyday life, but yeah, he certainly was that day, and that's still certainly fucked up. But if you actually look at Michael Richards' history with people in general, he's kind of a hot-headed, weird idiot anyway. And so I absolutely think he would do something racist like that. And fuck him. I like Emma. Uh, I think she's kind of just low-rent Maya. I was not paying attention at all. I got so enamored of talking to you pe you fine people. What clues did I get here? I'm out of the loop, but who is Michael Richards? He, play he played Kramer on Seinfeld. Interesting side note. I really liked Kramer when I was younger. Now I can't fucking stand him. I think he is the poster child of... Idiot American television doing the wacky sidekick. If you want to, if you want a, co a comparison between the worst wacky side, uh, the wacky sidekick, the worst wacky neighbor character, and the best wacky neighbor character, compare shit, fucking stupid idiot Kramer to uh, to Brian on Spaced. All the difference in the world. We're talking about actual comedy as opposed to just being stupid all the time. Do you still do movie reviews? Uh, you should do a review of Cool World from 1992. No, John, sadly, the movie review days are behind me. That explains it. I haven't watched Seinfeld. I still do like Seinfeld, but I don't like Kramer anymore. Tarantino is basically the human form of South Park which has its great and bad episodes. Yeah, kind of, I guess. Yeah, sorry, John, but we can already we can always have little private chats like this. Oh. <sighs> 
I'm going through a thread of logic that uh, is murky and I don't quite understand it and I'm getting a little bored and uh... Oh, he's gone. Brian from Spaced is also scary and a scary accurate depiction of artists too, and I say that as an artist. Yes, um, in America, and we actually know this because they were going to do a fuck awful, terrible American version of Spaced, and thank God that got thrown in the garbage. They would have made Brian Kramer because we think that that's what uh, being eccentric is, is just being wacky and stupid and falling down and, and no, Brian is quiet Brian is shy, Brian is reserved you have to get Brian to open up and in mid-conversation you know, he'll occasionally just say a lot of fucking weird shit and then think better of it because that's how actual people are and that's where comedy comes from, it comes from real people, it doesn't come from man fall down uh, the one season of South Park was so miserable it made me hate serialization. I actually thought they were doing really good with the serialized stuff for a little while, and then one of the seasons, it's probably the one you're talking about, uh, was just terrible. Oh, I don't remember how to get back there. I haven't seen every Tarantino film and have been cautious about doing so because of how controversial he is. I've seen most of them. I have, I've only liked two. Um, I don't think that Reservoir Dogs was a bad film, but I didn't, didn't really care for it. I think you need to go to the evidence room now. That's what I was thinking. Dad, I was just there. The... Where the f I think you get there from here. Damn. Sarcasm. Did Butch Hartman create? Did Butch Hartman created your childhood? Context. He made fairly odd parents and eats up the hype from it. Did, I think it did Bush Harman create your childhood? Well, by the time the Fairly Odd Parents came out, I was in my 20s. So, I missed the boat on the creating my childhood. DuckTales created mine. He also made Johnny Bravo. No, he didn't make Johnny Bravo, did he? Am I wrong? Butch Hartman made Johnny Bravo? I could have sworn that was somebody else. He and Seth wrote for season one. Oh, Hartman didn't make Johnny. That's that. I thought. I didn't think so. Easy mistake, though. Haha, -ha, thank you so much, person who gave me this tip. I didn't like Reservoir Dogs outside of the last half hour or so. Yes, I was the same. I think that was... You could see the seeds of what he was capable of, but he wasn't quite there yet. Again, it's not a bad film. Certainly not bad for a first film. I think I think that was his first film. I know it came before Pulp Fiction, anyway. Uh, it's certainly not bad for an early film, but uh, not great. The joke was he often says that he created your childhood. Fair enough. That sounds like something he would say. Von Partible created Johnny Bravo. Aha! Just like how Craig McCracken was a key member in the Dexter's Laboratory crew, despite not creating it. Yes! And then he went on to do uh, the Powerpuff Girls, which was conceived very differently initially. You can find some of the early drawings, and he was actually going to call them, I think, something like the Kick-Ass Girls. 
or something like that, which is the best name in the fucking universe. Hartman and Seth worked on season one of Johnny Bravo. They were both fired, along with all the other writers and directors at the end of season one. Wow, no, that's interesting. As I think about it, I don't think I ever watched season one. Whoop-ass girls. <laughs> okay, that is fucking great. The, the whoop-ass girls. I love it. Johnny Bravo 100% overhauled its creative team after season one. That's interesting. I, if I remember my uh, trivia correctly, Johnny Bravo went through a few, a few voice actors as well, and one of them, unless I'm wrong, somebody check my math, I think it was the same person who voiced Owen on Gargoyles. So I'm guessing that this was function on the DS where you were supposed to blow into the thing, but you can't do it anymore, so it's kind of pointless now. There was a thing called to Net Cartoon Network had called What a Cartoon. I don't remember that. I remember cartoon cartoons. That's when I was when I really started watching those. Look at all this cocaine. We got Dr. Roxo working the case. I do cocaine! I can't do the voice. Haha! -ha. Cartoon Network fired all the Johnny Bravo crew after they shut down Hanna Barbera and absorbed it into Cartoon Network Studios. Interesting. I never knew that they had dissolved the Hanna-Barbera thing. The the name. Wow. Car cocaine has not looked that good since Scarface. <laughs> How have you and Gabe got any chance to play Mega Man? Oh, have uh, Gabe or I had any chance to play Mega Man or Castlevania yet? Gabe's been playing a little Castlevania. I guess I could play Mega Man on here. I don't think that would be too taxing on the old wrist. That sounds like fun. That's a... Uh, Stream for another stream. Johnny Bravo, Bravo had the same voice actor for Johnny Bravo and his mom, Susie, throughout the series. Okay, I don't know where in the world I got that. I must have been thinking about another cartoon besides Johnny Bravo, which is kind of weird because Johnny Bravo was a very unique cartoon. I don't know what I could have been mistaking it for. The voice of that mom was the shit. That mom character was the shit. It was a variety program where they would air a bunch of cartoon pilots, and whichever pilots got the best reception would be picked up for a full-time series. Dexter was the first to be picked up. I think that's how The Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy got picked up as well, if I remember correctly. I remember that now, I just didn't remember the name. Uh, I thought The Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy was terrible. Did you know that for a year in 2009, Cartoon Network didn't air any new cartoons and just aired live-action shows? No. I did not. Why did they do that? Butch went to Nickelodeon after the... Uh, restructuring and Seth sold Family Guy to Fox and the rest is history. Interesting. Uh, Butch Hartman did a lot of really good work on Dexter. More cocaine, anyone? Sorry, my internet connection temporarily went out. Temporarily went out for a second. No problemo. <clears throat> Be sure to pick up Azure Striker Gunvolt One and Two for Steam or Nintendo Switch. It fills the Mega Man X absence quite. Oh yeah, I heard about that. I wanted to check that out. More? More cocaine? The ending of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was amazing. The theater audience uh, I was with was having a blast. My girlfriend really did not like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I really, really, really want to see it now, just to see if we disagree. Johnny Bravo was also a What a Cartoon short before it became a series. Oh, interesting. How in the world? That was a, such a weird premise. My favorite Johnny Bra Bravo episode was the one where he... Uh, 
where he knows Luke Perry. The Luke Perry episode is the best Johnny Bravo episode. It has the best joke in Johnny Bravo history. More poison, I mean tea, says my brother. Who can tell me what that's from? It's been known that the live-action choice was the worst decision of the company. A year later, they aired Adventure Time, and the rest is history. Adventure Time, it's another cartoon that I actually thought was kind of shit. And I am really in the minority on that one, but I don't like Adventure Time. How often have you died in a Mega Man-style game? Quite a bit. It's pretty much all I did when I was eight. It went out uh, while you were reading my message, but Dexter's Lab was the first to get picked up, Jenny Bravo was the second, and Cow and Chicken was the fourth. Uh, Powerpuff Girls was the fifth. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Hey, so if, if my brother is still here, these fine people would like to watch us play Castlevania and Mega Man, respectively, for my brother and I are... Uh, one of us is a little bit Konami and the other is a little bit Capcom. And let's just say I got the better part of the deal. Oh, my brother would also like for me to link his uh, Twitch channel, which I certainly will. Yeah, this print did take a lot of effort to find trying to link my Twitch channel, but it isn't letting you. That's weird. It let me. Here, let me try. Hang on, chat. I gotta bring up fucking Twitch. <clears throat> but yeah, I would be very happy to stream some uh, Mega Man, as long as it's like... Maybe I'll stream Mega Man 3. I already did 2 fairly recently. Boom! 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 Look at the size of that fingerprint. I'm going to be hemorrhaging my audience by the time I get back from this. I fucking hate Twitch. Hey, my brother has 217 followers on there. That's pretty good for a, a lesser-known person. Let's get him some more. So here in the chat right now is my brother's Twitch channel. Go follow him, and he's awesome. I do like Phoenix Wright, Sean. I, f I effing love Phoenix Wright. I'm having a hard time focusing on it because I'm focusing on the chat. I thought this would be a good uh, game to chat in since it's all point and click. Uh, but it is taking my attention away. Gendy... Oh, wait a minute. Mega Man uh, intimidated me when I was a kid. I had to conquer it, and now none of the classic games are hard to me. Mega Man is my favorite game series of all time. That's kick-ass awesome. Uh, software, Agents, uh, TV, that's awesome. Um, I love Mega Man as well. I didn't beat it when I was ki a kid, and it doesn't matter because I just love playing it. Just a warning, I haven't played Castlevania in about 85 years. Yeah, it's been a while for me since I played Mega Man, but they used to be our go-to games when we were little. So it'll be a nice uh, nice juxt juxtaposition. How do you and Gabe feel about these indie devs making Castlevania Mega Man-style games that Konami and Capcom, Capcom have not been bothered uh, to make? Well, I'm sure my brother is happy about it. Um, Capcom tried with Mega Man 11, so they, they at least gave it a good go. I wasn't crazy about Mega Man 11, but I think it's good that somebody is uh, keeping the keeping the spirit alive. The Chicken from Outer Space, the pilot for Courage the Cowardly Dog, was actually nominated for Best Ima Animated Short Film at the 1996 Oscars. Well, that's very interesting. Um, I didn't like Courage the Cowardly Dog either. I think Bloodstained is the Castlevania game that Konami would make if they were still Konami. I agree. I beat Mega Man 1 through 7 and MMX 1 and 2. Good games. Yes, they are. Yeah, I didn't really try. Well, Mighty Number no. 9 was such a... It was so disappointing to even bother. Oh, we're gonna sleuth. We got a sleuth here. Oh, we got it. It's Gumshoe! It's Gumshoe! 
Oh, gumshoe. Did you ever like any dark cartoon or show in general? What is what is a dark cartoon uh, to your mind? I liked Gargoyles. That got dark at times. I like Batman the Animated Series. Spider The Spider-Man cartoon got as dark as, you know, uh, children's television would let them be. Okay. We came up with nothing. We got nothing. It wasn't animated, but that TV show Dinosaurs had a super dark ending. It sure did. It's still controversial to this day. I actually th thought the ending was kind of kind of all right. Uh, you gotta hand it to them on one uh, one front. It was very unique. I don't think anybody expected it to end that way. I own all the MMX games in their original form. Yeah, X1 is my favorite video game. I never got a chance to play any of the Mega Man X games, and it's so sad. I should check them out again. Okay, so... Uh, what happened at the end of Dinosaurs? <laughs> you really want to know? You really want me to spoil it? Do I have to issue a spoiler warning for a show that obscure by today's standards? Um, just a spoiler warning for anybody who doesn't want to be spoiled about Dinosaurs. I... Uh, A meteor hits the earth and everyone dies. Everyone dies at the end. Uh, and um, the reason that happened is because it, you, if, if anybody saw this in the future, they would assume that it was a show made at a later date because it was, ki it was basically kind of a warning against, uh, uh, you know, destroying the planet at the expense of the planet for profit. And that's what they did. And they weren't able to prevent a disaster. And they all died. I think it's better than the Saint Elsewhere ending. That ending had balls. Are you talking about that show with the animatronic dinosaurs on ABC? Yes. Yes. I believe those were those things were made by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. And you know what? We don't have anything like Jim Henson's Creature Shop anymore, except for Jim Henson's Creature Shop, which they still do some things. But all special effects companies, you don't have any people doing models there anymore. You don't have anybody doing, like, hydraulic, animatronic, anything anymore. It's all computers. And I think that's kind of sad. I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's kind of sad. Well, guys, I am ready to get off stream here. Because I'm getting exhausted. We talked a lot tonight. Holy crap. We had a great combo. Sation. A great convo Sation. I'm getting really, really tired, and I'm losing my voice, and I'm losing the ability to speak. And I don't speak so good anyway. So I think I'm going to call it a stream. We can uh, say farewell to this idiot. The Saint House Elsewhere ending is dumb, yes. Gremlins still had some of the best animatronic puppets ever. I agree. The best special effect I have ever seen. Uh, computer generated, animatronic, anything. It is uh, Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors. That thing looks alive. They could not have done a better job on computer. They would have done a worse job on computer. I still don't quite understand how they made it that good. It is a wonder to behold. And I want to track down the people who made Audrey 2 and, and continue to praise them with mail and just homing pigeons in any way I can get a hold of them to say, you guys did an amazing job. Because that, that animatronic puppet is amazing. And on that note, I'm going to get going. Thank you guys so much for showing up. It has been... It's been a stream. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too. You guys have a wonderful